All right, so for today's video, I will be showing you how to compare camshaft position sensor and crankshaft position sensor signals to find out if your engine is in correct time. And also you could use this same test if you had variable valve timing to find out if your variable valve timing is working. You could see how much the cam advances um, and you could tell at what RPMs and all that kind of stuff. This vehicle is a 2004 Ford Expedition. It does not have variable valve timing, but when we start looking at the waveform, I'll explain to you how you could use it if you did. So um, the camshaft position sensor on this is quite easy to get to. It's right here on the front of the driver's side head. So we've got it teed into there, try to get it to focus for you. Okay, the crankshaft though is a little harder to get to. So we looked at the wiring diagram and we found where the crankshaft position sensor wires are um, at the PCM. And so we've teed into those over here. So we've got both of our signals ready to go. Let's open the PicoScope program. And you can see it's already going there. So you could just leave your probes as times one probes and plus or minus 20 volts is good, especially if you're gonna be revving it because these are two wire analog signals. So the more we rev it, the amplitude on those waves is gonna get bigger. So I'm gonna leave it at plus or minus 20. In fact, we might even turn it up a little and make sure we don't miss anything. So the blue trace is our crankshaft position sensor signal and the red trace is our camshaft position sensor signal. And we're going to increase our time so that we can capture a bunch of events on this. Um, and then I'm gonna go rev it and raise the RPMs and all those things and we'll be able to come back and then I'll show you how to analyze the waveform wave to find out if it's in correct time. Okay, so this is the waveform that we captured and you can see in this spot right here, this is where we're idling. And then I rev the engine up to 2,500 RPM here. And then I did a couple snap throttles just so you could see what those would look like. If you were doing this on a variable valve timing engine, you would want to put it in gear, hold the brake and rev it above 2000 RPM. So you put that load on there and that's when the VVT will activate. And, uh, and then you'll be able to see it when we, when we zoom in and start doing our measurements. And I'll show you that in just a second. So, Let's zoom in on this, and I'm just gonna zoom in on this range where we're at the higher RPM. And now you can see that the blue is the crankshaft, the red is the camshaft, and it's not a very special waveform on the camshaft. Sometimes you'll see like uh, three and then two and then one, and then it repeats. On this one, it's just a very simple one tooth that comes around uh, like that. And then on the crankshaft, you have one missing tooth. So from here to here, that represents 360 degrees rotation on the crank. And then on the cam, that's 360 degrees of it. And so you can see that there are 720 degrees rotation of the crankshaft for every 360 degrees rotation of the cam. Now to see them a little better, I'm going to separate them here like that. Now to get the measurements that we want, we're gonna pull out our phase rulers first. So let's turn those on. And then we're gonna pull over our first phase ruler and I'm gonna line it up with the first cam here. And then the second one I'll line up with when that pattern repeats right over here. And so there is, um, you can see the degrees that pop up along the bottom. And then I'm gonna pull over my other rulers and I'm gonna line one up with this peak on the crankshaft right there, and the other one on the first peak of the cam. And so with the phase rulers out, you don't just get time measurements, you get degree measurements. And you can see right there that the delta, or the difference between these two rulers that I pulled out is 67.48 degrees. Now, I don't know if that's good because I have nothing good to compare it to. So you would need to find a known good waveform for this to figure out if that's correct. If this was variable valve timing, what you could do is measure this, this exact thing at idle, and then measure it under your section where you did the load and raise the RPM. And then you can compare the two and find out how much it changed and see if that's correct. And it's pretty cool to watch how the intake camshaft advances and how the exhaust camshaft retards back during those variable valve timing events. Another cool thing that you can do if you have a four channel scope like we do here is you can, uh, on channel C and D, you could put those on 
the variable valve timing uh, oil control valves or the solenoids there. And then you can see exactly the moment when the engine or the PCM commands those on and find out at that point, like, okay, how much did it advance right now? And then, you know, you could try different RPM ranges and see how much it advances ver versus the RPM. There's a lot you can do uh, with this cam crank correlation test that we have going on here.